Presents. Today I have a terrific opportunity for all of you to see someone that has added so much in my uh, heart to appreciation of Hawaiiana. You know, uh, first, Kirk Nelson Flood, welcome to Maui. Thank you, Jason. <laughs> Aloha. Aloha. Welcome to our show. Great. I am really thrilled to be here with you. Uh, we're sitting here in your mom's house. Um, Kirk's mother is Carla Flood. Many of you know Carla Flood has been a very active member of our community here in Kihei and Wailea. And um, we really appreciate the opportunity to sit here in your home. We're here because it's a nice space and because there's a lot of beautiful art here. Look behind us. Watch this. Here I go. We're going to get closer in a minute, but is this a, an old piece, a new piece? Well, it's fairly recent. It's about three or four months old. It's called Flight of the Tropican. Flight of the Tropican. We're going to get a close-up of it. Ah. What's a Tropican? A Tropican is a bird that's indigenous to Hawaii. And you just uh, sort of put them on the map, if you will. So to speak, yeah. What a beautiful environment. You do um, Hawaiian tropical scenes. You've done uh, portraits. You've done all kinds of stuff. You've been painting a long time? Pretty long time, yeah. Since I was about six years old. Oil, acrylic, what's your medium? Uh, right now I'm primarily working in acrylic, but uh, I do mixed medium and oil painting too. You come from a long line of uh, artist family. I, I don't know how many of you know that Carla Flood is a wonderful artist herself, right? Plus you have a, Very true, yeah. a sister. A sister, Kathy. Sister Kathy, who I She's know. also an artist. And she does murals. Many of you probably have seen some of Kathy's murals around, like uh, the Animal Center, right? The Mount Humane Society. Uh, Kmart. Kmart. Dolphin Plaza, That's right. yeah, wow, and others. That's great. And Kirk's stuff, I mean, I have just come recently to appreciate your work, and I am really very taken. You know, there are lots of artists that I see around, and we share, you've seen many of them, but Kirk has a real gentle feeling in his work. We'll be right back. We took a break. We just had a visit from Carla Flood herself, who you'll see here on TV, because she is a ton of stories and a lifetime of achievement that I think people on uh, Maui would love to share. Back to Kirk. As you see here, I have a very happy visitor. Hi, Lonnie. She's joined us here. Yeah. You know, Kirk, I always wonder when I sit with artists, what really got them to start painting? In your case, I guess the same thing, but you're in an art family. Well, that's true. Uh, I started painting and doing art at a very young age, and as I learned later, it was a way for my mom to keep us busy <laughs> <laughs> on rainy days and whatnot. And also, the fact that she was an artist, uh, you know, was just really a great inspiration. So we've been at it for quite a while. Uh, sublimating our talents into many different areas. Uh, my sister and I, Kathy, uh, both have been painting contractors and artisans for 20 years plus. 
and yet we both uh, majored in fine art in college and received degrees. Painting contractors, you mean painting a wall, painting a ceiling? Painting a ceiling, painting a wall, painting the facade of a building. Wow. We're going to let the phones ring, you know? Yeah. Um, the, um, so you were able to have a career of painting for a living, if you will, and also fine art. You do specialty painting as well, don't you? In that arena? Yes, yes I do. Uh, I do a lot of old masters types of with what is called now faux painting, which includes wood graining and marbleizing and faux bois and trompe l'oeil and, and different types of uh, really very early techniques that have been around for centuries. And uh, being an artist to begin with really helped me to adapt to this somewhat new field, even though it's really quite an old field. And uh, the demand right now for faux painting and decorative arts is very strong. And Kathy and I both feel very blessed to be a part of it. Yeah, it's a blessing and an opportunity. I, you know, I imagine as you're painting someone's wall and taking a white wall and turning it into whatever. Whatever, yeah. That's an amazing thing by itself. That's an art form that I, I wonder if we ever explored that. You guys would find that very interesting. You know, you look sometimes at a wall and you think, wow, that was a really expensive thing. Maybe it was expensive to paint it, but... It's really, a, those are art pieces, fantastic ones, too. Exactly. And as we're learning more about our environment and where we live, we find that the ambience of the setting really does a lot for our outlook. It's a very positive thing, be it color or form. And art has always been a great inspiration to people. Well, you know, I, I uh, really appreciate that. As I'm looking around here, I see some of your beautiful pieces. And uh, I think we're going to go and explore in a little while. But I always wonder, so from this kind of faux painting, your art did not emerge. You were painting before that, yes? Yes. But I've learned so much from just what is called house painting that I think it has really helped me a lot within my artistic vision and within my techniques. And uh, I'll get into that a little bit more later. Okay. Um, I know you have a beautiful wife, Andrea, and she's a painter as well. And, yes. And uh, you have uh, a sister who's a painter and a mother who's a painter. Um, You've seen so many different things in your life. How did you come upon uh, the kind of work that you do now? I mean, you, all of you have very different styles. And you've really, I guess your style is changing. I just saw in your, even in your most recent piece you showed me, the figure drawing. But you see you have a, a real Hawaiiana style, really striking stuff. Well, thank you. Actually, I've always been very interested in ethereal atmospheric images and I went to college in Northern California at Humboldt State University and in that environment we would get the fog in the morning in the evening and it would recede and the way the light came through it was very diffused and I still use that type of diffusion uh, as an inspiration in my current work in Hawaii because the light here in Hawaii is brighter and yet things are sharp and diffuse in all of what we see and that is something that I'm consciously aware of when I work is the light of diffusion and clarity and sharpness contrast well, the, what I really see is um, it feels it doesn't look like a uh, photograph, but it it gives me a very real, very present kind of feeling when I'm with them. Is it the light? Is that what I'm sensing? 
I think so, because I, I don't consider myself to be a realist. And yet, some people say that some of my work looks photographic, but really, if you were to typecast it, I would call it visionary realism. Because what I do is uh, I'll somewhat exaggerate my color schemes to create a little more life in the image. And yet, living here on Maui, I've had so many people tell me that they've seen a sunset just like the one I painted, and that it's just unbelievable that almost anything that you can create can be seen at some given point in time here. Such a magical place. For all of you who are yeah. seeing this but sitting in New York City or in Los Angeles or San Francisco, come on out to Maui. We'll show you a special place here. Yeah, the <laughs> truth is stranger than fiction. That's right. Always. Well, why don't we take a walk around and look at some of your pieces? Sure. Okay. And I'm going to take Lonnie here and put her on the couch because she's still sleeping, having a good spot. Makes you want to jump in the waterfall of the ocean, huh? Wow. Pretty inviting, Kirk. Yeah, I wish I was there right now. <laughs> <laughs> what we're looking at here is a, a G clay print of the original. The original was quite a bit bigger, like five by six feet. And uh, a client in, in uh, Oahu bought the original a few months ago. This is a smaller G clay print. Boy, it still speaks to you. Yeah, there's actually two birds in it. Really? The first one you can see pretty easily because yeah. it's fairly large, but the second one is uh, there too in the clouds up to the right. Uh, to the right. Oh. There he is. Oh, look at that. Wow. Oh, this is so beautiful. And I notice also when I change the light exposure, you get to really see the different portions of the painting. Yeah. Boy, you really have fun painting. I can see it. Yeah, this one was fun. I really enjoyed creating this scene. Boy, these are the kind of worlds you really want to live in. Exactly. They look familiar. Like they look actually like many places we know, yes. yet many places I mean, they have this little extra twist. It's almost like your own world. Yeah, this one actually has an E.L. needle in it, but it's not E.L. Valley. Really? Yeah. Is that right, right here? Yeah. Right there. Yeah. And what I think is interesting also is you have water coming from two sides. It's like a, is that what it is, like a pool of water and the ocean coming? Exactly. Wow. All the rain comes from the mountains down towards the oh. ocean and collects in this reservoir, this pond right on the ocean by a beach. I want to be there. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah, this is a smaller painting of Can't Kamea, really tell. the Alihi, looking into the valley. And actually, there's a priest on the hill to the right that he's gazing at. Where is he, up further? He's over to the right, a little bit more. Come up. Oh, you just get higher. There he is. Oh! Yeah. Wow. This is a beautiful one. Yeah, this one is a scene from Wailo, Maui to Haleakala. Wow. I keep wanting to zoom in on these pools. They feel so inviting. Yeah, well, this, this one here is actually the ocean. It's like a bay or an inlet, and the waterfall meets the ocean right at this point. Oh, there's the sky right at the top. 
So this is on the way to Hana? Yeah, it's about halfway there, or just right outside of the Kanai Peninsula. You can pull over and swim. It's a beautiful pool. Look at this, we have a treat. Carla Flood with Kirk. Aloha and welcome to our show. Aloha. Aloha. Thank you for the uh, use of your beautiful home for uh, shooting today. Um, you're a beautiful pair. You were just telling me you have four children and ten grandchildren? Yes, sir. How can you do that at 21? Well, it's easy. <laughs> it's called step on them before they multiply. <laughs> We look forward to getting together and doing an interview with you sometime soon. Uh, you've had a, a wonderful career. What a blessing to have such wonderful children with such a multitude of talents. I am very, very lucky. We call it the Three Flood Artists, and uh, we've got great plans. Uh, Kirk's sister's husband owns a piece of property in K and I, and I've moved my easel out of there. I've been out of here. I've been trying to get to it for a long time, and we think we're going to set up a kind of interesting. We all do the same subject, but we all do it so in styles of our own, of which we have quite a diversity. I hear, and but we've got to do it. <laughs> I hear the phones ringing. We're going to let you get to your work, and thank you for taking away the time to be with us. My pleasure. Aloha. See that. Part of the ceiling, that's Kathy Flood. And there's Kathy growing over that vent. <laughs> you know, I'm walking through the house, I see all these beautiful pieces of art. Are just the two of you uh, artists, or what about your other, do you have other brothers and sisters? Yeah, well, they're artists too, actually. Are they? Yeah. My younger brother is uh, a woodworker. He's the captain of a fire department in Santa Rosa, but he loves to work with wood, and he's very good with his hands. Wow. And then my other sister is a doctor in uh, California, outside of Berkeley, and she's also a great draftsman, draftswoman, I should say. She can draw very well. Well, we appreciate your uh, family tree. And this is another tree. I bet that's Kathy again. My daughter, my oldest daughter, Jessica, is uh -huh. a ceramic artist in California. Wow, wow. We were going to sit down and have a little more conversation, but I think Lonnie is a little too comfortable. Why don't we go over to your studio? Sounds good. You know, the richness in the color is so amazing. I can find myself going into each one. So much here. Yeah, the colors in this one are particularly vibrant. And uh, there's a lot of energy going on. The volcano is actually in an eruption. There's lightning behind it. And rocks coming from the, the mountain itself as well as a, an outrigger sailboat that's calmly in the sea. Where do we see your art? I mean, how can people get to see and enjoy your art, Kirk? Well, if they give us a call at 874-0294 and 
make an appointment with us. They could come over just about any time. Right to your studio. Right to the studio where we have a, a gallery also. Wow. And uh, I also have some work featured at Maui G. Clay. Oh, oh that's so good. That's a good place for them to see. They could go there too and, and ask for what, to look at my work. Yeah. But now, one more time on your phone number here. It's 874-0294. Uh, Oh, I see it now coming on screen. Great. Nice. Well, I think we should go into the studio and see the master at work. Sounds good. I bet our audience would be intrigued to know. See that little brush he's using? Now check out these brushes. They get big too. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, primarily I like to use big house painting brushes. Wow. Uh, particularly at the beginning stages of my painting. And for diffusing clouds and laying in large areas, I don't use a little brush until the end of the painting just to highlight some of the smaller areas. But my most favorite tool are my fingers. Yeah. I am sure that the learning process of doing art is really an exciting one. This is You've gotten better and better and better and better and better. And you seem more relaxed than many artists I see. You really oh. and very comfortable. You just go at it. Yeah. It's almost like second nature. <laughs> <laughs> but every painting is a challenge and uh, every idea a goal. But really, it's so therapeutic for me to paint because I don't I don't spend all day painting on on my paintings. I wish I had the time to do that, but uh, I really don't. So whenever I do get an opportunity to work in the studio, uh, it's really a very special time for me. I can kind of go off into my own world and uh, recreate my visualization. Is that a paintbrush right now? Yeah, this is actually a, a paintbrush that has not much hair on it. Uh -huh. But uh, for the smaller areas, it's helpful. This painting is almost finished, mm -hmm. so I'm just kind of bringing some of the areas into focus a little bit more, adding highlights here and there. But before I'm done, I'll stand back a few more times and readjust maybe the sky or some of the composition and the, the value of color so that it works for me in what I was visualizing. So beautiful. Wow. <laughs> great. Or you can take any frame along the way. Yeah. But I mean, you know, I just am amazed. When I see an artist's palette, I think that should be a whole sales area. Because the palette that you use to create your work gets so beautiful. Oh. And it's constantly, I'm constantly cleaning and starting over. <laughs> so fun. Yeah, I, I use Winsor Newton mural paints. 
and uh, for me they work great. Fantastic. And they dry extremely fast and that's one of the reasons why I use these large brushes because in order to do a sky scene like this mm -hmm. I have to do it very fast otherwise the paint will dry and create a sharp edge that I don't want. I want it diffused. Mm -hmm. So I'll lay the paint in and I'll swirl, swirl it around and then work back into it later. Fantastic. Where with oil, you really have the luxury of, of creating incredibly subtle effects. But then again, you have to wait for the dry time. Where with a painting, an acrylic painting, you can literally do a whole painting in one day. Full of detail. I appreciate you getting some of this work for us to see. You know, I mean, on each one, there is such power in each one, Kirk. I am just really impressed and they create such strong emotions and these are good sized pieces these aren't small well yeah this is a uh, McKenna at dawn with Puli in the background yeah. a couple of dolphins swimming what I like to do when I'm working from a particular site is to romanticize it a little bit or create drama with my life so that it becomes a little more interesting. And yet at the same time, like I said before, you can actually experience a moment like this here on Maui where the colors are as vibrant and dramatic as we see them here in the painting. Wow. Not that unusual. What a chore, what a good chore. You have so many large and beautiful paintings, and these are all originals. Yeah, all of these are originals, except for this is a G clay of the Yao needle. Oh, like the one we saw earlier. Exactly, this is about half the size of the original. Right, but I mean, I'm looking here knowing that that's just the beginning. You have been very prolific for a very long time. Beautiful work. Thank you. You know, from back, you get to experience the macro. And now, let's go closer. When you get closer, wow, look at that. Feels like we're walking right on the land here. Yeah, there's a footpath you can take. Wow. Let's go with you. Maybe we can walk down the footpath. Sure. Go to my favorite view. What a great view. You know, I bet one of the most frequently asked questions is the one that is the most amazing. You are a father and a very attentive and loving father, and yet you find time to spend time in creating this beautiful art. What's your secret? Well, I just chip away. Chip away, I guess. Yeah. In other words, I might have... 10 minutes, I'll put 10 minutes in, or maybe on the weekend I'll spend a couple hours. But consistently through the week, it's amazing. I, I persevere and the paintings get done. Wow. Well, or, let's go back. I'm really enjoying, you know. I think we're just going to have to see some of them. People are going to have to come and enjoy your studio. That's all there is to it. And get to see more and more. Where's this? This is this looks like the walkway in Kihei to go down to the beach near Wailea. Where is this? This looks like maybe imagination. It's imagination. But there are places I've been that are very similar. And it, the name of the painting is called Kapu. Oh. There's a little sign there in the grass that says Kapu. It's a private road. Oh, yeah. You can see footprints. Somebody's taken the road right to the beach. Oh, let me see. Oh, there it is. Kapu or no kapu?
Where's this one? This looks like a, a created vision. It is a created vision. Wow. It has kind of a, a big island feeling, but uh, there are places on Maui that aren't too dissimilar. This one is called Contemplation. And who is our featured man here? Oh, it's an alihi of earlier times, gazing at the birds and just the tranquility of the waterfalls and the whole dynamism of light going on at this time of the day. What's intriguing is that it's either just a remarkable sunset or it's actually a volcano. You know, I noticed that in your uh, drawings, when you have figures, that they have such color and clarity and you know, it's real certainty. How did you um, come to understand what these images, or, you know, and you're keeping things traditional. Where did you learn about Hawaiian uh, garb and tradition? Well, I've been doing a lot of research over the years and I've had the great opportunity to spend time with Hawaiian elders and hear from them their accounts of the way things were and the way things actually should be portrayed, as well as uh, researching the work of fellow artists like Herb Connie on the Big Island, right, and actually even John Weber, who was aboard Captain Cook's ship. And, wow, uh, really terrific! But it's 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 a constant learning process, and uh, I look forward to learning as much as I possibly can about earlier cultures like this because. I think that it's so important to preserve what was once before to keep fresh in our minds so that we do not lose the authenticity of what the Hawaiian culture was and really is today. Well, thank you. I know that many people uh, share those sentiments. It's really terrific to see that you kept things in traditional mode where you really are honoring. And this Atlanta Sweet Series. So all these photos that we're seeing here are all you, you all your work. Yeah. Tremendous body of work. Oh, Please continue. This, this is just one of many portfolios. Wow. This, this was the first uh, underwater painting I ever did, actually. And I did it in Florida. And it's called the Atlantis Suite One. And here we've got underwater volcanoes and statues and wow. even an underwater river. Underwater river that runs down the beach. Wow. And this is a bed in a garden. Oh, I saw that inside. Yeah. And then this one's called The Sun Giving Birth to Five Earths. Wow. This is a Venus on the Treasure Coast. Fantastic. Let's see. So many. This is uh, the Atlantis Suite with the table of elements, underwater prisms, architecture from the Renaissance, and uh, fetus. Wow. Kind of a discussion of the wonderment of life. Well, you know, I am just thrilled by the scope of your work and the styles that you have. Wow. There's some underwater pyramids. Now, how many years ago would you say this work is? Uh, probably five or six years ago. Okay. Wow. And this series is called The Atlantis Suite. I've really enjoyed walking around the studio with you and seeing you paint and looking at your art. There's just such a world that you've created, and it's so diverse. It has so many different elements. I really appreciate you letting us into your world. Well, thank you very much, Jason. It's been great to have you here, and it uh, feels really good to be able to share this with uh, everyone. Well, you know, I, I sometimes have a special spot in my heart when I do an interview, and uh, whoever I'm interviewing is someone that I really relate to from the heart. It's really been a pleasure. My pleasure, too. Great. Well, we're going to probably take a cruise around the gallery just one more time, because it's hard to leave. These worlds here are really very special. Um, I hope that you'll give us an opportunity to come back 
and share with you more in the future. Anytime, it'd be great. And I hope you'll let us take a look at Andrea's work. Oh, she's looking forward to that too. Oh, yeah. And your mother. Yeah, and my sister. And your <laughs> sister. We could have a whole flood of ideas. We could have a whole flood of ideas, <laughs> that's right. That's right. We appreciate it. Let's take a gander around the studio just one more time. Thanks, Kurt. You're welcome. Aloha. Now, I can't help but notice there's a jazz musician down there. That's a whole other world. We're not even going to explore this show. That's right. Wow. You've done a lot of these, huh? Yeah, I've done probably 70 to 80 portraits of uh, primarily jazz musicians in mixed media, oil painting, uh, pencil renderings, paper paintings. This particular image is on clayboard, and it was done with a razor blade by scratching off a black layer of paint. So it's actually the reverse of a, of a pencil drawing, where you're instead of adding, you're actually taking away from the surface. Wow. And it's a portrait of Louis Armstrong. For joining us. We appreciate you coming into our world and we're happy to come into yours. Aloha.